So this chapter 16 is called Off to the Fair. And all the years I was growing up, going to the fair was a big thing for me. I was in 4-H and I would take chickens to the fair and our dairy cattle to the fair. And so fair was a big thing for me. And and then after I wasn't young anymore, my little dogs would always come to the fair. Yes, they would. And they'd have so much fun seeing all the stuff that was at the fair. There were rides and there were the like the horse barn and the cow barn and the chicken barn and all all the exhibits at the fair. So the fair was kind of cool. Roxy has never never been to a fair, have you? No, no, you haven't, but you would love the fair. So that's what this chapter is about. It is off to the fair. Here we go. The night before the county fair, everybody went to bed early. Fern and Avery, Avery were in bed by eight. Avery lay dreaming about the that the Ferris wheel had stopped and that he was in the top car. Fern lay dreaming that she was getting sick in the swings. Lurvy was in bed by 8.30. He lay dreaming that he was throwing baseballs at the cloth cat and winning a genuine Navajo blanket. Mr. and Mrs. Uckerman were in bed by 9. Mr. Mrs. Uckerman lay dreaming about a deep freeze unit and Mr. Zuckerman lay dreaming about Wilbur. He dreamt that Wilbur had grown until it was 116 feet long and 92 feet high and that he had won all the prizes at the fair and was covered with blue ribbons and even had a blue ribbon tied to the end of his tail. Hmm. Down in the barn cellar, the animals too went to sleep early, all except Charlotte. Tomorrow would be fair day and every creature planned to get up early to see Wilbur off on his great adventure. And when morning came, everyone got up at daylight. The day was hot. Up the road at the Arable's house, Fern lugged a pail of hot water to her room and took a sponge bath. And then she put on her prettiest dress because she knew she would see boys at the fair. Mrs. Arable scrubbed the back of Avery's neck and wet his hair and parted it and brushed it down until it stuck to the top of his head. All but six hairs that stood straight up. Avery put on clean underwear, clean blue jeans, and a clean shirt. And Mr. Arable dressed, ate breakfast, and then went out and polished his truck. He offered to drive everybody to the fair, including Wilbur. Bright and early, Lurvy put clean straw in Wilbur's crate and lifted it into the pig pen. The crate was green, and in gold letters it said, Zuckerman's Famous Pig. Charlotte had her web looking fine for the occasion. Wilbur ate his breakfast slowly. He tried to look radiant without getting food in his ears. In the kitchen, Mrs. Zuckerman suddenly made an announcement. Homer, she said to her husband, I am going to give that pig a buttermilk bath. A what? said Mr. Zuckerman. A buttermilk bath. My grandma used to bathe her pig with with buttermilk when it got dirty. I just remembered. Wilbur's not dirty said Mrs. Zuckerman proudly. He's filthy behind his ears, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Uh, Wilbur's not dirty, said Mr. Zuckerman proudly. He's filthy behind his ears, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Every time Lurby slops him, the food runs down behind his ears, and then it dries and forms a crust. He also has a smudge on one side where he lays in the manure. He lays in clean straw, corrected Mr. Zuckerman. Well, he's dirty, and he's going to have a bath. Mr. Zuckerman sat down weakly and ate a donut, and his wife went to the woodshed. And when she returned, she wore rubber boots and an old raincoat, and she carried a whole bucket of buttermilk and a small wooden paddle. Edith, you're crazy, muttered Zuckerman. But she paid no attention to him. Together, they walked to the pig pen, and Mrs. Zuckerman wasted no time. She climbed in with Wilbur and went to work. Dipping her paddle in the buttermilk, she rubbed them all over, and the geese gathered around to see the fun, and so did the sheep and the lambs. Even Templeton poked his head out cautiously to watch Wilbur get a buttermilk mat bath. Charlotte got so interested, she lowered herself on the drag line so she could see better. Wilbur stood still and closed his eyes. He could feel the buttermilk trickle down his sides. He opened his mouth and some of the buttermilk ran in. 
It was delicious. He felt radiant and happy. And when Mrs. Uckerman got through and rubbed him dry, he was the cleanest, prettiest pig you ever saw. He was pure white, pink around the ears and snout, and smooth as silk. The Buck Zuckermans went up to change into their best clothes, and Lurvy went to shave, and he put on his plaid shirt with his purple necktie. The animals were left to themselves in the barn. The seven goslings paraded round and round their mother. Please, please, please take us to the fair, begged a gosling. And then all seven began teasing to go. Please, 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 please. They all made quite a racket. Children, snapped the goose. We're staying quietly, quietly, quietly at home. Okay, Wilbur, Wilbur, Wilbur is going to the fair. And just then, Charlotte interrupted. I shall go too, she said softly. I have decided to go with Wilbur. He may need me. We can't tell what may happen at the fairgrounds. Somebody's got to go along who knows how to write. And I think Templeton better come too. I might need someone to run errands and do general work. I'm staying right here, grumbled the rat. I haven't had the slightest interest in fairs. That's because you've never seen one, remarked the old sheep. A fair is a rat's paradise. Everybody spills food at the fair. A rat, rat can creep out late into the night and have a feast. And in the horse barn, you'll find oats that the trotters and pacers have spilled. It's the trampled grass of the infield you'll find. In the in the trampled grass of the infield, you'll find an old discarded lunch boxes containing the foul remains of peanut butter sandwiches, hard-boiled eggs, cracker crumbs, bits of donuts, and particles of cheese. And in the hard-packed dirt of the midway, after the glaring lights are out and all the people have gone home to bed, you'll find a veritable treasure of popcorn fragments, frozen custard dribblings, candied apples abandoned by tired children, sugar fluff crystals, salted almonds, popsicles, partially gnawed ice cream cones, and the wooden sticks of lollipops. Everywhere is loot for a rat. In tents, in booths, in hay lofts. Why, a fair has enough disgusting leftover foods to satisfy a whole army of rats. Templeton's eyes were blazing. Is this true, he asked? Is this appetizing yarn of yours true? I like high living, and what you say tempts me. It is true, said the old sheep. Go to the fair, Templeton. You'll find that the conditions at the fair will surpass your wildest dreams. Buckets with sour mash sticking to them, tin cans containing particles of tuna fish, greasy paper stuffed with rotten. That's enough, cried Templeton. Don't tell me any more. I'm going. Good, said Charlotte, winking at the old sheep. Now then, there's no time to be lost. Wilbur will soon be put into the crate. Templeton and I must get in the crate right now and hide ourselves. The rat didn't waste a minute. He scampered over to the crate, crawled in between the slats, and pulled straw up over him so he was hidden from sight. All right, said Charlotte. I'm next. She sailed into the air, let out the drag line, and dropped gently to the ground. And then she climbed the side of the crate and hid herself inside a knot hole in the top board. The old sheep nodded. What a cargo, she said. That sign ought to say Zuckerman's famous pagan two stowaways. Look out, the people are coming, 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 shouted the gander. Cheese, cheese it, cheese it, cheese it. The big truck with Arable at the wheel backed slowly down to the barnyard. Lucky Lurvy and Mr. Zuckerman walked alongside. Fern and Avery, Avery were standing in the body of the trunk. The truck hanging to the sideboards. Listen to me, whispered the old sheep to Wilbur. When they open the crate and try to put you in, struggle. Don't go without a tussle. Pigs always resist when they are being loaded. If I struggle, I'll get dirty, said Wilbur. Never mind that. Do as I say, struggle. If you were to walk inside the crate without resisting, Suckerman might think you're bewitched. He'd, he'd be scared to go to the fair. Templeton poked his head up through the straw. Struggle if you must, he said, but kindly remember I'm hiding down here in this crate and I don't want to be stepped on or kicked in the face or pummeled or crushed in any way or squashed or buffeted about or bruised or lacerated or scarred or biffed. Just watch what you're doing, Mr. Radiant, when they get 
to shoving you in. Be quiet, Templeton, said the sheep. Pull in your head, they're coming. Look radiant, Wilbur. Lay low, Charlotte. Talk it up, geese. The truck backed slowly to the pig pen and stopped. Mr. Arable cut the motor, got out and walked into the rear and lowered the tailgate. The geese cheered. Mrs. Arable got out of the truck. Fern and Avery jumped to the ground. Mrs. Uckerman came walking down from the house. Everyone lined up at the fence and stood for a moment admiring Wilbur and the beautiful green crate. Nobody realized that the crate already contained a rat and a spider. That's some pig, said Mr. Arable. He's terrific, said Lurvy. He's very radiant, said Fern, remembering the day he was born. <clears throat> well, said Mrs. Uckerman, he's clean anyway. That buttermilk certainly helped. Mr. Arable studied Wilbur carefully. Yes, he's a wonderful pig, he said. It's hard to believe that he was the runt of the litter. You'll get some extra... Wow, listen to this. You'll get some extra good ham and bacon, Homer, when it comes time to kill that pig. Wow. Wilbur heard these words and his heart almost stopped. I think I'm going to faint, he whispered to the old sheep who was watching. Kneel down, whispered the old sheep. Let the blood rush to your head. Wilbur sank to his knees and all the radiance was gone. His eyes closed. Look, screamed Fern, he's fading away. Hey, watch me, yelled Avery, crawling on the f- all fours into the crate. I'm a pig, I'm a pig. Avery's foot touched Templeton under the straw. What a mess, thought the rat. What a, what, fan- what fantastic creatures boys are. Why did I let myself in for this? The geese saw Avery in the crate and cheered. Avery, you get out of the that crate this instant, commanded his mother. Who do you think you are? I'm a pig, cried Avery tossing handfuls of straw into the air. Oink, oink, oink. The truck is rolling away, Papa, said Fern. The truck, with no one at the wheel, had started to roll downhill. Mr. Arable dashed to the driver's seat and pulled on the emergency brake, and the truck stopped. The geese cheered. Charlotte crouched and made herself as small as possible in the knot hole so Avery wouldn't see her. Come out at once, cried Mrs. Arable. Avery crawled out of the crate on his hands and knees, making faces at Wilbur. Wilbur fainted away. The pig has passed out, said Mrs. Uckerman. Throw water at him. Throw buttermilk, suggested Avery. The geese cheered. Lurvy ran for a pail of water. Fern clerk climbed into the pen and knelt by Wilbur's side. It's sunstroke, said Zuckerman. The heat is too much for him. Maybe he's dead, said Avery. Come out of that pig pen immediately, cried cried Mrs. Arable. Avery obeyed his mother and climbed into the back of the truck so he could see him, so he could see better. Lurvery returned with cold water and dashed it on Wilbur. Throw some on me, cried Avery. I'm hot too. Oh, keep quiet, hollered Fern. Keep quiet. Her eyes were brimming with tears. Wilbur, feeling the cold water, came to. He rose slowly to his feet while the geese cheered. He's up, said Mr. Arable. I guess there's nothing wrong with him. I'm hungry, said Avery. I want a candied apple. Wilbur's all right now, said Fern. We can start. I want to take a ride in the Ferris wheel. Mr. Zuckerman and Mr. Arable and Lurvy grabbed the pig and pushed him headfirst into the crate. Wilbur began to struggle, and the harder the men pushed, the harder harder he held back. Avery jumped down and joined the men. Wilbur kicked and thrashed and grunted. Nothing wrong with this pig, said Mr. Zuckerman, cheerfully pressing his knee against Wilbur's behind. All together now, boys, shove! And with a final heave, they jammed him into the crate. The geese cheered. Lurvy nailed some boards across the end so Wilbur wouldn't back out. And then using all their strength, the men picked up the crate and heaved it up toward the truck. They did not know that under the straw was a rat. And inside a knot hole was a big gray spider. They saw only a pig. Everybody in, called Mr. Arable. He started the motor. The ladies climbed in beside him. Mr. Zuckerman, Lurvy, and Fern and Avery rode in the back, hanging onto the sideboards. 
the truck began to move ahead. The geese cheered, the children answered their cheer, and away went everybody to the fair. Wow. That's the end of that exciting chapter. The next chapter is called Uncle. Hmm, not sure what that means, but we will find out. See you next time.